Hello, welcome to my channel. If it's your first time on my channel, this is Star with Tufoma Omoluru. And I show you how I design my dresses. I do DIY crafts at my own leisure time or for my customers. So today what I want to show you is my own take on making this lovely denim dress. I have a blog where I shared um, my love for African print fashion and I came across this beautiful style and I want to show you how I made this particular style for a particular client. So if you're ready, let's get into the class and see how I was able to achieve this. So for this particular tutorial, you're going to be needing denim, cut out patterns from an Ankara or African print material to make the flowery design you can see on the dress. So don't forget you need to subscribe to keep seeing my videos as they drop and don't forget to give a thumbs up as well. So to start cutting, what I did was to get my denim fabric and I folded triangularly because you don't want to fold straight since you want to get a kind of flare um, effect at the end. So I folded diagonally or triangularly and I'm going to start measuring from the side okay the length of my dress so i'm going to measure the front length first which is about 42 inches so that guides me in cutting it in a very straight fashion so don't forget fold diagonally and start cutting from the edge there you get the right proportion so i'm just cutting on the right side but normally you need to cut on the wrong side but for clarity purpose i'm doing this so once you've gotten you've gotten the length i used my ruler to create a base at the top and i'll cut out that so now i've cut this out and i have 42 inches long fabric now it's a shed dress so i'm going to take from the middle 1.5 inches you can take two inches but i'm doing 1.5 inches because it's denim it's quite heavy and so i don't want it to be too thick when i start to sew so once you've taken off the 1.5 inches, get the ruler and just make a line. The line serves as a guide when you're going to start um, cutting. So once I've done that, the next thing I want to do is add an extra one inch before I start to take my measurements. And this is because a shirt dress, you know, is going to overlap to create the button space and the button hole. So if you don't do one inch, one inch after the one and a half inches for the button hole is going to be problematic. So once I've done that, I got my shoulder and now my arm hole, depending on the size you want to cut. If you don't know what size you need to take or how deep your arm hole should be, you need to watch one of my earlier videos where I sh showed you how to cut a perfect arm hole. So this is a size 14 and I'm using a nine inches depth arm hole. So once the armor has been created, the next thing I want to do is to get my bust measurement. So you see again, I took one inch from the 1.5 inch inches allowance I had left before I start to take my bust measurement. Your bust measurement comes one inch beneath your armhole. So you shouldn't take it exactly at one inch after, uh, and directly under your armhole. It should come down a little. And now to get the waistline, I'm going to be measuring 16 inches from the top. Then I will divide my the waist by four, which I'm doing, and I'm going to mark that there. So next to get the hip, I'm going to measure eight inches from the waist. Don't forget your one inch after the button all allowance. And I'm going to divide my hip measurement by four as well. And I've marked that. Now we're going to connect those dots. So from the hip to the waist to the bust, or from the bust to the waist to the hip, it depends on which works for you. So you need to really be careful, pay attention to your arm hole because since it's, it's folded triangularly, sometimes if you don't, if you're not careful, you have a um, too broad top. So you want to keep making amendments to your arm hole if necessary. Now from that point of the waist, I just go outwards like creating a flare a little flare or an a line so what i added at the base was about um six inches extra to the hip to make it flare so now i'm going to cut out the front panel over the front block of my dress 
take off the armhole. Then before you cut the sides, don't forget you also need to leave your ease or your sewing allowance. So I'm going to be leaving one inch all the way to the bottom. One inch, you can leave two inches, it depends on you. So I'm cutting that out. Take off the excess fabric you don't need. I love to work with by 60 fabric, so you want to make sure that the width of your fabric is quite wide. Because if you get a by 60 fabric, then you would use less material for your sewing. So now I'm opening up the center of the front block because you need to have two pieces in front. So on each side, we have 1.5 inches for the um, button allowance. So now I'm going to take my neck measurement. The neckline depends on how big you are. So I'm going to be doing three inches by three and a half to start with. So if after I'm done, it's doesn't take my next circumference, then I can always open it up. So depending on your size, you want to cut your neckline accordingly. So this is a size 14, and I think 16 inches or 16.5 inches for the circumference of the neck is fine. But don't forget to that neck circumference, you need to add the allowance you left in front. Okay, so I just made my shoulder slope, and I'm going to cut that out. Yeah, so the 1.5 inches will be for the fold. I'm going to fold first half an inch, then one inch. But if you have an overlocker, you can just run that and just fold once. So I haven't cut the front piece. Now I'm going to also fold the same way I folded the front piece, so cut the back piece. I'm going to fold that same way and I'm going to use the front piece as a pattern for my back piece. So note this time around, the back piece or the back block is going to be longer than the front. Not everywhere, but at the middle of the back. So at the side, it's going to be the same length, but as we're going to start making it longer, as we go into the middle of the back um, fold. So now I'm going to cut, not exactly the same as the front. Remember we have the 1.5 inches extra um, material in front because of our button. So I'm going to place my fabric, taking off the 1.5 on the back corner, as you can see. So it comes forward, it's wider than the back piece. So you want to make sure of that. If not, at the end of the day, you're going to end up with a bigger size than you actually want. The button is just going to be in front and not at the back. That's the reason I am folding this way. So now I'm going to use the front piece as a pattern to cut the back. So I've cut the back. I made the back 10 inches longer just for you to see, to know what I did at the center. So now to be able to add the Ankara fabric, what I did was just to imagine how I want it placed and I drew a line to form the shape that I would love. Now I'm going to get my Ankara fabric folded into two. I'm going to place on the table because you need to fold into two because you have two pieces in front. So now I folded on the table. Now I'm going to try to follow the pattern I created on my denim. So you see, I use the chalk to mark that at that end and also in the middle. Then systematically, I'm going to be lifting my denim following the pattern I created on my denim to be able to cut out the pattern that I want. So this takes a little bit of patience and skill. You don't need to worry if you don't get it so perfect because after you place on the dress, you can still trim um, in the way you want. So now I'm cutting out.
So once I've cut out, now I'm going to place that material on the denim. Okay. I need to cut the sides. So that is exactly the same length and width as my dress block. So So that's the fabric now I'm going to lift and I'm going to put place on the denim I cut so you can see the effect we're going to get at the end of the day. So make sure you have the opposite pieces on each side of the block so you can see. So if you cut yours and you're not satisfied, you can always trim to get what you want once you've done this. Yeah, so now once you've done this, you're going to take the fabric and stitch from the bottom, okay, and you flip over on top of the dress and you can now stitch this African print or Ankara to the shirt dress, to the denim shirt dress. Now I have my cutout um, flower design from another Ankara print or another African print. So I'm just going to arrange them. But... Before you place this on, you need to have stitched the other, the first print on the denim. So now I'm going to get my overlocker and I'm going to, not my overlocker, sorry, my sewing machine using the zigzag stitches. I'm going to use the zigzag stitches to fix the flower pattern on my dress. So you want to arrange in a way that you have the same flower mixture or combo on both, um, both sides. So it needs to cover where your Ankara uh, ends on the denim so once we finished with the you don't place the flowers too close to where you have the button hole because if you do so it's going to go underneath so i'm taking them off because i need to stitch on turning from the bottom flip over then run a stitch on it before i start to place the flowers on it so and I'm also going to close the sides because you don't want the print moving um, all around. So I'm going to measure the side of the Ankara print now. So that when I'm going to be cutting the Ankara for the back piece, it's going to be exactly the same um, height. So now this is my back piece. You can see it has a tail. So it's longer than the front piece so you can make yours as long as you want it can be up to the um, floor level it can be mid calf level feel free to play with it don't forget as I always say this is my own way or this is my own perspective of how this should be made so now I'm placing again the denim piece for the back on my Ankara fabric so I'm going to do the same cut the same way I cut the front piece so Cut exactly using the back denim as a pattern. So make sure your fabric is flat. If it's rumpled, you can get an iron to make sure that it's well ironed. So I'm going to measure out the same depth or height as the front piece. And that's what I just did. Now I'm going to get my scissors and I'm going to just cut all around um, the block the back block. Sometimes it's really tricky when you are cutting sitting down, you need to cut from funny angles. So don't worry about my angle. It's just I don't want to get up and as long as the job is done, it doesn't matter your position. So once that is achieved, to cut the back, I need to create like a curve. So it's not going to be straight, it's a bit slanted as you can see. There's no other fast rule as to how slanted it should be. 
but this is the way I want my to be slanted because when I was when I saw the style and I wanted to make it, I didn't see the back, but I'm just I just try to imagine how it's going to look like. So when you're going to copy a style, sometimes it doesn't have to be verbatim, doesn't have to be exactly the way the original designer made it. You can always adapt it to suit your preference or what you or your own perspective of how the style should be. That's what I love about fashion. So this is the back piece. Now I'm going to also do the same thing. So from underneath and flip over on top, fold and stitch on the denim. Okay, like that. So when you're folding, you can use an iron to fold the top so it stays. So you see what I've done? I stitched, okay? Then always top stitch on the denim so it keeps the fabric flat and in place. So once this is done, the next thing is run your stitch around you don't need to fold the front um and carry on because the um flower cut out from the other ankara print is going to help cover or seal those edges so make sure your fabrics are flat when you do this so we'll keep that aside and now this is the back also i stitched turning it from the bottom and I flipped over, I've ironed it. Now I'm going to iron the top and run a stitch over it so it stays in place. So you can decide to put your flowers at the back too, just as I did in front, or you can decide to leave it. So this is the finished work using my um, zigzag stitches. So once you use a zigzag, you want to make sure you adjust the stitch length to suit what you want to do so i used one inch on my stitch length and the zigzag it was the medium um stitch i chose so that the, the stitches weren't too big and they could look so nice like an embroidery kind of stitch so the next thing is i'm going to fold the two sides so i can get my button all allowance now we're going to cut the sleeve and to cut the sleeve I'm going to measure the length. I want it to be 15 inches so or 16 inches. So I need to make the top part 6 inches. And I need to also make the bottom part 6 inches. But I won't cut exactly 6 inches um, long material. Because I'm going to be stitching on top and at the bottom. So you want to add that into your cotton. So what I cut here is about 7 inches. So after sewing it goes to 6 inches. I also have a video where I showed you how to cut your normal shirt sleeve because it's the beginning. If you want to be able to cut any perfect sleeve, you need to know how to cut your shirt sleeve. So I'm going to notch the top. That guides me when I'm going to start fixing my sleeve to my dress. So now I've cut both, um, both sleeves, the top part of the sleeves. Now I'm going to cut the flare. You know, it's a bell sleeve. So the top is fitted and the bottom is flare. So with the remaining fabric, I'm going to fold my fabric into four. Okay, because I need two flare and I want it to be a full circle flare. So I need to take the circumference of the sleeve and make sure that I also get that same width for my flare. So what I did was to divide that into two and I just checked what I would need to do with the flare. Okay, so... I've created the top part of the flare and I'm going to check, measure and see if when I finish cutting, I'm going to get the same thing as the width of my sleeve. So if you try the first time, it doesn't work. You need to increase it a little more until you get the perfect um, width to fit into your sleeve. And then now I'm going to get the length of my flare and that's what I'm doing. So... I'm cutting seven inches as well, if because one um I'm cutting about eight inches. Sorry, because I want it to be fourteen inches. So this I'm going to fix into that. You can see my flare. So I'm going to open this up. So one for each piece of the top of the sleeve. Now to cut my collar, I'm going to cut two inches wide fabric, fold it into two. I don't know 
um, I, I, I didn't measure the, normally before you fix your collar, you must have joined the shoulder of your dress and you now measure around to see what you need for your collar. But I'm just taking a blind guess here. So I'm doing 20 inches. So later on, when I'm done stitching, I'm going to check if I need to bring it down, um, bring it down or if, I'll cut if I need to reduce the length or not. That will be done after I must have stitched my dress um, together, the shoulder of my dress, and folded the center part. So that is the base of my collar. Now I'm going to cut the proper collar. I'm cutting four inches because I want it to be 3.5 inches wide after sewing. So the this proper collar and the base of my collar, they both have to be the same length but the width differs okay so you need two pieces for the base you need two pieces for the collar you can decide to add your collar stay but this is denim it's quite thick so i'm not adding anything to my collar it's just going to be that way so for my collar i always prefer that the main collar is one inch um, shorter than the base. So for the strip, collar strip, I'm going to open that up because you need to use one for the front, one for the back. Then you sew. We're going to cover the side of the base. I'm going to just, from the top, remove one inch. Then I'll make my curve because I don't want it to be straight. So I'm going to curve that as you see I'm doing. Okay. All right. So just make it curved. That would be where the collar will be attached to. Then for the proper collar, the collar itself, I'm also going to make a slant. I don't want it to be straight. So I'm going to take off one inch on top as well. Not from the side that is folded, from the open side. I'm going to take off one inch. Then I'm going to create my slant. Okay. All right. So that's it. So you can see the top length while the base is quite longer than the top. Okay, so all you need to do is place this, stitch the size of the collar, then take one piece of the collar base and you're going to sew around and take the other one on the other side and it's going to flip over. Then you can add that to the neckline of your dress. So for the sleeve, what I did was to cut some bias with my Ankara fabric to add some aesthetic to the sleeve. So to cut your bias, you don't need to cut in a strip in a straight fashion. No, it has to be diagonally. So it has some stretch and it doesn't fold. And also cut a strip of fabric, um, a long strip for the belt, like you see. So this is the finished product. As you can see, I've done my buttons. And I fixed my flowers with my um, zigzag machine. For the buttons, I did 2.5 inches in between. But the first, between the first and the second button, I did 1.5 inches. So you just make sure it's even all the way to the bottom. And neatly done. Okay. So the rope I was talking about is about 20 inches long. I just folded and stitched and add it to the center of the sleeve. So that's also just an aesthetic, aesthetic really. So this is the finished dress with a asymmetric bottom. So if you liked my video, don't forget as usual, you can give me a thumbs up, a like, okay? That's the back here. Before I forget, before I round up, that's the back. I didn't add flower to the bottom, but you can add flower to yours if you want to. And the last flower I added after I had closed the side. So that seals it up properly. And I also did it that in the middle of my dress. So if you wanted that, it's fine because it gives a perfect silhouette behind at the back. It makes it sit really nicely. Well, so that's my take on making this beautiful denim Ankara shirt dress. 
So don't forget you need to subscribe to keep seeing my videos. Until I see you next time, it's bye from me.